Hi, in this video we'll be exploring the different ways you can create color in P5.js. This is part of a series on how to code generative art. In the last video we learned to use the fill function and the background function to make different gray colors. But there are several ways to make colors. One thing we can do is to use common color names. So if we put in quotes red, whoops, red, we get a red circle. We can try blue. We can try light blue. Ah, but that doesn't work. Uh, let's do backspace. And there, we have light blue. What if we did light green? I wonder if it, we can do dark green. Let's try that. All right, and what about just green? So that's one way to make color. Now let's go back to our numbers. We had something like 150. What if we added a couple more numbers? Let's do 200, 200. Uh, okay, let's try putting this to zero. Aha, we get a different color. Let's try putting this to zero. Now we have a red circle. So what are these? These three numbers represent red, green, and blue. So red, if we do 255, this goes from uh, zero to 255, and this is full red. If we do zero and do the second one, 255, we get full green. If we do zero here and 255 here, we get full blue. And let's say we do 255 for the green and the blue, we get this color. Now, what if we do 255 here as well? We get white. Now that's interesting. Red, green, and blue, if you mixed paint together, you'd get mud. But this is light, and when you mix red, green, and blue light together, you get white. Let's make this red. And there's one more number we can add to the back of this. Let's try comma 150. And it's hard to tell what's going on here, but let's go ahead and add another circle. We'll fill it with a different color. And let's actually put this circle uh, in front of this circle. There we go. So I've got this circle is completely opaque, but this circle is semi-transparent. So this fourth number here is uh, representing transparency or alpha. Uh, a high alpha means it's opaque. A low alpha means it's transparent. So if I put this to uh, 50, it would be even more transparent. You can barely see it. But if I put it to 255, it's fully opaque. Using a low alpha is going to come in very handy later when we want to add texture to our work. Stroke is another function that uses color. Uh, let me change the background to 150. Let's put in stroke. We'll do 0, 0, 250. And we have a blue outline to this. It's kind of hard to see, so let's add another thing that we can do, another function uh, called stroke weight. So stroke weight, and we'll put five here, and now it's thicker. Stroke weight is how thick the outline is. So this is five pixels thick. The default is one pixel thick. There's also something called no stroke. So we'll do no stroke. And you can see that this one had a stroke, but then afterwards I called no stroke, and now this one has no stroke around it, no uh, outline. So the no stroke doesn't have any arguments in it, but you still need the parentheses. There's another function we can learn here. It's called no fill. So if we put no fill here, we have a circle that has no coloring in the middle. We're just seeing the background. If I were to, let's switch the positions of these two. Yeah, I'll cut this out and we'll put it up here. And now you can see that we can see this. There's no fill, so we're seeing the red behind it. There's a third way to make color. Uh, I'm looking at the fill reference on the P5 reference page. Uh, and we have hexadecimal. So this is used in websites. You can put in quotes and the pound sign and a hexadecimal number, and you can get these hexadecimal numbers off of websites. 
but we're not going to use that for generative art. I just wanted you to know that that is a possibility. What we're mostly going to use in generative art is none of these that I've just shown you. We're going to use something called HSB, which stands for Hue Saturation Brightness. But before we can work with HSB, we have to change the color mode. So for that, let's put in color mode, whoops, mode, HSB. And notice that the M here is capitalized. That's important. Uh, also notice that these colors uh, are changing. If I just put M here, notice it is not bolded. These are bolded. This is not. That's because this is a special word in P5. So if I change that to this, now it's bolded. Now let's add some more arguments to this. Uh, I'll explain this in a minute. We'll just put comma 360, comma 100, comma 100. Let's say we're filling our circle and this is HSB. Uh, I happen to know that the hue for blue is about 220. Uh, the next one is saturation. If we want to make it fully saturated, that's going to be 100 in this case. And if we want to make it fully bright, we're going to do 100 for that as well. And now we have a blue circle. So the hues are the color wheel and it goes around 360 degrees. So you've got zero up here in red, and then it goes to orange, yellow, green, blue. This is about 220 right here. And then continuing around until you get back to red at 360 degrees. So right here, this is about a 90 degree angle. So let's try putting in a 90 here. And we got a green, so this color wheel doesn't exactly match up with the P5 color wheel. I think we have to go more like a 50. There we go, 50 is yellow. So that's our hue. The second one is our saturation. Let me uh, change this back to 220. So this is fully saturated at 100. If I wanted to make it less saturated, I could change it to 50, and now it's more pale. So it's not using as much color. Let's make that fully 100, and this is the brightness. So if we reduce this to 50, we get a darker blue. Now, if we put this all the way down to zero, we're just gonna get black. And if we put this to 100, but we change the saturation to zero, there's no color, so we're gonna get white. It's hard to see that on this background. Let me change the background to 50, there you go. Now you can see that. If we have zero saturation and zero brightness, we're gonna get black. It doesn't matter what the hue is here. If we have no saturation and no brightness, it'll be black. So I hope it's clear to you that this is going to give you a lot more control over your colors than the RGB mode. Uh, now let's return to this color mode up here. These numbers represent the maximum that we want for the H, S, and B. Uh, because I could make this uh, any number I want, I could make it 20, and then that's the maximum for H, S, B, which means that this is maxed out, which is gonna be red. Or let's say we've got this right now at 60 saturation, 60 brightness, but if we change this to 60 and this to 60, we get full saturation and full brightness. But the way I like to do it is we have our 360 for hue, 100 for saturation, 100 for brightness. I think that makes good sense. You will see in some of my videos, I use 120 for saturation, but you can use 100 or 120. I think most color palettes though that you get off the internet are considering 100 as the max for the saturation. But let's switch back to RGB mode. Now, one way to do that uh, is we could change this color mode to RGB. I'll just do color mode RGB, and we'll just use whatever the default is for RGB, which is gonna be 255, 255, 255. We can also specify uh, the maximums for the R, the G, and the B. But another way that we can change this back to RGB since it's the default. Uh, we don't need to do that. We can just comment this out with these two slashes. So the two slashes 
are for commenting out our code or adding a comment to our code. So I could add a comment here, slash, slash, the max hue, max saturation, and the max brightness. And so this will tell people that that's what these numbers represent. It's a good idea to get in the habit of adding comments to your code. Now I've said that HSB is what we really wanna be using, but can we just forget about RGB? I wish we could, but we can't because there are three functions that use RGB. There's a git function, there's a color picker, and there's a pixel array. We're not gonna learn about those things today, but just know that RGB is gonna come up even if you try to use HSB all the time. Let's talk a little bit about color palettes. I'm gonna leave a link to this sketch that I'm using right here in the video description. Uh, this is my color palette review. So I have collected color palettes. Let me show you in this colors.csv. These are numbers, and these numbers represent the hue, saturation, and brightness. In this case, I'm using seven colors in my color palette. Uh, mostly, you want to be collecting color palettes of five colors each, uh, but I have added two extra colors to the color palettes. These first two colors are for backgrounds, the next four colors are the main part of the picture, and this last color is a highlight color. Oh, and I just showed you something new without realizing it. Uh, so there's this little thing here. Uh, if you click on that, you'll see there are several files. We've been using this sketch.js, uh, but there's also this index file, which you don't really need to know about, but this is linking to the P5 library. And then there's the style, which you're never gonna need to use. And now there's this color CSV, which doesn't come standard when you open up a sketch, but this is something I added. It's called a CSV table. Uh, and specifically, this is a color table. When you open this sketch up, you're gonna see color palette table by Steve's Makerspace. But if you go up to File, you can hit Duplicate, and now you can change this to whatever you want, and you're going to see your name here, and then you can save this, and it's basically a fork of what I was doing. So now you can make changes to this if you want and save it, and so what I would recommend you do is find your own color palettes. So let's go to a browser window and we'll go to coolors.co so that's c-o-o-l-o-r-s dot c-o and this is a color palette collection there are several color palette collections on the internet this is the one i like to use if you find a color palette you like uh, in this case you can click on these little dots here i can click on the quick view and this is giving me the hue, saturation, and brightness of the first color in this color palette. And what I can do is I can open up my sketch and start a new line. And then let's stop that right now. And then I can put in uh, 197, 54, 33 for the hue, saturation, and brightness right here. Then I can switch over to this and then type 173, 73, 62 and so forth and my program is looking for seven colors so let me just put a zero 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 comma zero 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 so they'll so that there'll be a couple of blacks at the end and we'll run that and you can see comparing this over here to what we've got here we've collected our color palettes uh, it looks a little bit different let me try changing this to 100 because I've used 120 here. If I change this to 100, do I get a better result? Yes, I think that's a little bit closer to what this color palette is. It's still not quite the same. This one turned out kind of brown, but it's pretty close. And so if I don't like this brown, if I want it to be more orange, I can go find that. Uh, this is the first color, the second color, the third color, 
So this, this is the start of the fourth color. That's the hue, the saturation, the brightness. Let's try making it a little brighter. It's 67 right now. If I change it to 77, there, that brown just got a little lighter. Let's try 87. There we go. There's our orange. So we're wrapping up this video. I suggest you play with color and you might want to start collecting these color palettes. I will explain later on uh, how this whole color palette table works. Uh, for, for right now, you can just copy it and collect color palettes. That does it for this video. In the next video, we're going to explore a lot more shapes and the random function. If you like this video, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.